today we're looking at Pente, which is an abstract strategy game from Winning Moves Games. It is played on a 19 by 19 Go board. So if you're familiar with Go, or if you already have a Go board, you've already got the pieces to play this game. But if you get it from Winning Moves Games, it comes in a red standard edition, which personally I like the way it looks better. But then there's also the blue edition that I've got here. The advantage of the deluxe blue edition is that it comes with this handy travel tube. The travel tube is big enough to hold the board and the four bags of marbles that comes with the game. Inside each of the velour bags are a bunch of colored beads. So here are the black beads that come with the game. As you can see, they're nice looking beads. And for comparison, here are the yellow beads. So these beads can be used to play Pente, and there's four different colors, so you can have up to four players. But this game is really a good one for two people. If you've ever played Tic-Tac-Toe before, you already know half the rules to play Pente. Uh, basically, you want to get five in a row. Where Pente varies from Tic-Tac-Toe, however, is that you have a much larger playing area, and it's a little harder to get five in a row compared to three on a three-by-three three board. Included in the tube, which it'll, it's kind of rolled up because of being in the tube, are the rules. But here is the simple rule set. And basically, the big difference between this and tic-tac-toe or any get-so-many-in-a-row game is that you're able to capture pieces. If somebody has two and only two in a row, you can put a piece on either side and then you can remove those pieces from the game. So, this makes a real big difference when you're playing because the board can actually change as you go. The pieces don't necessarily stay where they get put for the entirety of the game. If you catch somebody with two pieces in a row and you're able to sneak your pieces in on either side, you're able to remove them from the board. So, the, the playing field kind of shifts as you go. There's also a whole set of rules for playing with more than two people. There's rules on, for example, if you encapsulate two different players' pieces, do you capture those or not? Things like that, questions that will come up if more than two people are playing. Um, there's, there's a whole page full of rules, and just like everything else, it rolls up and fits in the tube. The rules don't demand that one color goes first or not, but traditionally lighter colors go first, so I'm going to stick yellow down. First player always puts his piece in the middle point, and then the next player can play wherever they want. You don't necessarily have to put your pieces next to the opponent's piece, but it's good to do that, I think, to put pressure on them. I haven't played very much Pente, so I'm far from a master at it, so I'm just kind of putting pieces down where I think they ought to go, but there's really no right or wrong. But Now, for example, once I put that stone there, on my next turn as black, I could put it on the other side of that too, right here, and then I would capture both of those yellow pieces. So as yellow, I'm going to want to place my stone over here to avoid that. Now again, the goal of the game is to get five stones in a row. So as black, I'm trying to get three in a row there, and now as yellow, I'm going to put a fourth one down. Now. Obviously, anyone paying attention is going to realize that there's four in a row, and I need to block it. Uh, the rules say that it's customary to announce when you make three or four in a row, although it's not really required. And personally, I don't like forcing people to announce things because it kind of takes away a little bit of it. And if you've ever played any five in a row game like this, there are others besides Pente that you can actually play with the Pente board because they all use basically the same pieces. But any five in a row game, you know that getting four in a row, you're basically doomed. So as yellow, I'm going to block them here. And play continues on like this until one person tricks the other. So I'm just going to keep going the way I would if I was the one actually playing the game. Now, normally, a person would want to play on either side of this three in a row, because once I get four in a row, you can't block both sides of it in one turn. However, because of the unique ability to capture things, 
that's yellow, I'm going to do this. Put a stone up here. Now, if black's not really paying much attention and still wants to go for that four in a row, hoping that you know, maybe yellow's not paying attention, I'm going to go here. Now, as yellow, I can actually do two, two things to stop this pente from forming. Either I can put a stone here and capture both of those, or I can actually put a stone here, because as you can see, those two are also surrounded by yellow. Now, I wouldn't want to put it here, because then black could play here and capture both of mine. But, I'll put my yellow stone here and take both of these black pieces. Now, as you can see, that doesn't necessarily change anything, because black can and will just continue on like he was going to, and put his black stone back. Now, there are cases where capturing like that still wouldn't do any difference. However, this is one of those cases where it's actually beneficial to capture because, as you notice, because I took that piece away that was blocking my four in a row, I now have four, and so, as yellow, I'm able to put my fifth piece here, get a pente, and thus I win the game before black can put its fifth piece down. So, that's just an example of a play of the game. I wasn't really playing seriously, I was just tr doing different things to demonstrate, but, like I said, I haven't played a lot of pente, but the more you play it, just like any abstract strategy game, you're gonna evolve different thoughts in your head of how to really beat someone you can play with four people, and then it gets really exciting because you've got to really plan ahead, take into account all the different things that they can do. If you're a cheapskate like me, and you like games that can be reused, as you'll notice, this is a Go board. You can play Go on it. If you don't have Go stones, I don't know that there's enough stones here to fill up every single space on the board. However, you can use, for example, yellow and green counts as white, and the black and blue stones count as black for Go, and you could play a game of Go on this. Um, in fact, there are many different games that use the traditional Go board and pieces, so if you buy Pente, you've got a cool game in itself, plus you've got all the Go variations and things of that nature that you can play with it. If you're interested, make sure to check out a link below the video to get to the product, and uh, I, I hope you pick up some Pente and enjoy it yourself, because I certainly love my abstract games, and I'm glad to have added Pente to my collection.